My name is Lauren Lau, and this is my adventure in Grand Colombia. Welcome back to the channel, and welcome to another beautiful day in Armenia, Colombia. You know, I, I have to tell you that every time I go out, I'm reminded why I love Armenia in particular. People are so friendly. It just, it just blows me away. Uh, I had to deal with a couple taxi drivers today, a couple strangers, uh, two people in my building. All of these people I had not met before, and in every single case, they're just so nice. But that's not what I'm here about. You're probably saying, where's my Bukaramanga videos? They're coming. But life intervened, and I decided to just do this um, relatively quick update on why life intervenes. And then I'll get to the Bukaramanga videos. that They're coming. They're not really behind. I just, uh, yeah, I had some things I had to take care of. Uh, one of the big things was my car. Now, I bought that car when quarantine began, basically. And it sat in the garage in the, in the basement of my last building for six, seven months. And when I bought it, I got the upholstery done because it was trashed. I put a new battery in it, and then we got locked down, and there you go. So, you know, I change apartments. Obviously, I've got to move the car, right? <laughs> so it's like, rah, 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 rah. well, first the battery was dead, but the guy who uh, sold me the new battery he went over on his motorcycle, he picked it up, he took it back, he tested it, said it was fine, he gave it a recharge, and it was fine, and he brought it back. How nice was that? So, nothing. I don't know what's going on, but I'm not hearing the fuel pump when I turn the key on, so I'm thinking, you know, it's. I know the pump didn't just die, but what will stop that? Alarm system. So anyway, I don't have any tools. I don't have any way to deal with anything. The only thing that changed in the car was they did the seats, and there's a wearing harness under the driver's seat. Maybe that's it, but I don't even have tools to take the seat out. So I get a, I, I call a friend, and I said, who is good, reputable, reasonable price to repair cars? So she gave me two options. Uh, I got more to talk about in another video about how people respond. But, um, so the second one came with a tow truck right on time. I made the appointment so I could be at the other building, 10 a.m. He was there at 10 a.m. exactly. Put the car on the flat flatbed. I paid the flatbed guy, who was 70,000 uh, pesos, uh, to flatbed it over to the repair shop. And the repair shop is in a barrio you know, as I've explained before, you have these areas, neighborhoods in the city that are specialized. It might be construction equipment. Well, it's the same thing for car repairs. Well, you'll have them throughout the city, but there is a barrio that's just one after another after another and everything you want, whether you want a car detailed, you want a body shop, you want mechanical repairs, you want uh, 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 radios installed. And it'll just be one after another. It goes around the corner, takes up an area of about uh, maybe two blocks by three blocks, maybe three by three, something like that. I didn't walk the whole thing. I just walked a little of it today. So I go over there today. Well, first, I uh, let me back up. I, I don't know the guy, and I trust the person who referred him, but, I mean, you don't know. So I told the guy... Please look the car over and get back to me with whatever you think needs to be done or has to be done. Now, I'd already given this thing a once over, and I know about cars. Uh, you know, I spent a good part of my life directly related to repairs and things like that. So I already had my list of what needed to be done and what I wanted to have done. I, I knew before I even bought the car. First of all, I knew that the key is problematic. It's it's a coded key with a chip in it, the 2004. And when I bought it, I knew there was an issue because you can only start the car with a valet key, but you got to have the coded key with you. 
Okay, well, that, I don't want to have that situation anyway. So I'd always thought I would get a new key. And as it turns out, uh, sitting there with the battery dead all that time, it, it, it's lo it lost its code. The computer in the car lost its code, had to be recoded. He was able to jump by to confirm it, and the car is running fine, but uh, new key. That's dealership only. Cost of the key, 200,000 pesos. It includes coding the computer. Uh, the repair guy is not doing any kind of markup on it, and he's going to drive the car over, let them do that, and drive it back to his shop when, when that time comes. Uh, I'm not picking it up for two weeks because I don't have the money to pick, pick it up. But uh, so he, he gets back to me with a list and he tells me about the, the key situation. He suggested I change the oil, even though the oil didn't look bad, but because it had been sitting for so long. And honestly, the filter, it, it didn't look like a new filter, although I was told that the oil was changed. Maybe they didn't change the filter. I mean, you never know. And it's not a big deal. I mean, what's an oil change? Well, an oil change here, a uh, filter and every oil is 100,000 pesos. They said, okay, go ahead and do that. Now, when I was messing with the car trying to get it to start, I put some gas in it thinking, well, maybe the gas is just too low to pick up. And I could smell that kind of varnishy dead gas smell. It wasn't real strong. I mean, I grew up in a junkyard, so I knew I knew that I know that smell real bad, real well. I could, let me spit the words out. But I could I could get some of that smell and it made sense car sitting there all that time and before I bought it, I don't know how long it sat. So at the very least, I figure let me get the filter changed out because when you have dead gas, it can clog up a filter. So I, I ask him, uh, well, on my list is the gas filter. So I had oil change, I had gas filter. I bought the car with a power steering leak. I knew that it leaked, but I wasn't sure. I thought it might be the hose or it could be the seal in the steering rack. Either way, I, I've, I decided to take the plunge because it had new tires and brakes and all kinds of other stuff. So, so that was my list. And... Um, the timing belt, when I bought the car, yeah, I'll put this together so it makes sense. I know I'm kind of scattered here. When I bought the car, it was represented to me that the timing belt had been changed recently. And there was a receipt, but I pulled a, a guy on Facebook here locally said, oh, you got to get that timing belt changed. It's an interference engine. Well, I'm, I'm aware of that. I get it. Um, I used to change timing belts. I, I'm fully aware. But the timing belt had been done. Well, over the course of the months that passed, while well, it's sitting there, it just kept nagging at me. And I had pulled the receipt out and I looked at it. And it was kind of like a homemade receipt and I couldn't read the part numbers. Well, here's the thing. If I'm going to use this car to uh, pick up you guys at the airport and bring you here and let you uh, rent my room for two or three days, and then I drive you maybe to Medellin or Bage or something like that, or even over to Manizales. I need to have this car as reliable as possible. We don't want to be stuck at 8 o'clock at night on the highway. So because I didn't have the timing belt done, and you never know uh, when something's being represented correctly or not, I put on my list total the key, change the oil, gas filter, a uh, timing belt, and the power steering leak. That was my list. So I'd ask the guy to go back, look the car over, and then give me a recommendation and price for all of these things, and then I would make a decision. And it was kind of a test because you know what a lot of car guys like to do? It's like they're going to over-recommend. They're going to they're going to find things that, you know, maybe they're going to be good for another year, but they're going to try to sell it to you. I knew the brakes were new. Maybe he's going to try to, well, it sat and the, the uh, brake pad delaminated. And, I mean, you never know. So it was a bit of a test. So he gets back to me, and this is what he said. Well, you need the key, and it's got to be coded. And he explained, you know, how he'd handle that. Well, you don't necessarily need it. I would recommend the oil change. Uh, you might want to do the fuel filter, the, the gas. Um, you know, it smells like dead gas, plus uh, we're going to need to put gas in it. Uh, and 
He says your power steering leak is the seal in the steering rack. And um, and he says, I don't know if you need it or not, but you know the timing belt on these, if the timing belt breaks, it, you know it's an interference engine, so it can destroy the engine. So you may or may not want to do that, but I'm just letting you know. And nothing else. His list was exactly the same as mine. I'm, I'm, and I can't tell you how much confidence that gave me in the guy. I felt really good about that. Uh, so the total cost was 800, 830,000 pesos for all of those things, plus 70, um, for all of the, the repairs and 70,000 for the tow. Um, I could, okay, I probably should have written this down and had it in front of me. It's on my phone. I'm ballparking those numbers. I did calculate the repairs out two dollars and it came to 223 dollars okay so not counting the tow it came to 223 dollars and the tow it's what that's about 20 bucks 18 dollars so 223 dollars and and 18 dollars and that's the cost of all of those things plus i got the good news of it, it you know, he didn't find anything else either, and I felt good about that because he was able to jack it up and I couldn't, so I had to crawl around on my back. So that's the deal on the car. So I got it moved. It's out of the garage. They can quit yelling at me about that because they rented that apartment and they needed that parking space, and that building only had one. Here I have two spaces plus spaces for two motorcycles. So I can have four vehicles here if I so choose. Uh, so that's the deal on the car. I'll have it back in four weeks. I had enough for the fifty percent down. I just, I, you know, I, I, I would never prepay, but it's common for fifty percent down. I expected that. I knew going in, and he asked for the fifty percent down, so I was ready for that. Um, but if he finishes it in three or four days, which he probably will, I don't have the other four hundred and some thousand to bail it out. So. Um, it's got to wait for the two weeks. But I, you know, I gave him a heads up on that and he was fine with it. Um, so I've been busy with that. I've had to deal with that for the last, uh, well, since Saturday. And today is Thursday. <laughs> uh, sitting and waiting for a tow truck that never came. A lot of frustration, a lot of wasted time. And it couldn't be here so that I could edit. So that's the deal. Plus, it's an update on what's going on with the car, because I know a lot of you are interested in the cost of what, what to deal with with the car. So far, it's it's swimming, but I've yet to drive a mile. Um, and last thing I will tell you about is Bukura Manga videos. This is how it's settled out. The first one I'm going to do is on the bus trip itself. Might as well start from the start. So I'll talk about uh, the bus exchanges, how they handled COVID. Uh, some videos of the terminals, and just, you know, some information on that. And then we arrive in Bukaramanga. Remember, I first did an overview, so it's like uh, intro. So part one will be the bus trip. Part two will be the hotel. I check into the hotel. I've got some things to say about how that went. Uh, the hotel itself, where it's located, some pictures around the hotel, the room, and uh, the, the view around the hotel. So that'll be part two. Part three, uh, it'll be some of my walking around the city, different barrios, and stopping it and doing some videos at three of the 160 parks in the city. So that'll be part three. Uh, part four, here I'm kind of sketchy, I'm not sure. I'll probably do either history, or I might do the mall. I'm excited about um, one of the malls in particular I went to. And if I'm excited, you know, sometimes it jumps the, the line. So bus trip, hotel, walking in the parks, um, mall or history, and then um, there may be one after that. I'm not sure how much material I'll use. Uh, if I have extra material, I'll, I'll do one more, and then I'll do a summary. 
So that's what's going on. That's what I'm doing. That's what I've been doing. And that's what I will be doing. So thank you for hanging in there. Thank you for uh, subscribing. Last I looked, it, the subscriptions are going like molasses. 10 more subs to hit 3,000. If you're not sub, come on, at least 10 of you. I'm tired of looking at it. Uh, also, uh, Sunday's coffee time hit 500 video marks. So I've done officially 500 videos um, that, that are still existing that YouTube didn't delete on me. So I've got 500 videos on the channel. So that's pretty cool. They sent me a certificate um, for whatever that's worth. And I will be... I will be changing from YouTube. I've decided I, I just have to do it. It's too unreliable. And it will be Vimeo. So now I'm trying to figure out how I can afford it. Um, I'm going to probably drop every subscription I've got. Like I've got one to Hulu. I'll drop it. i got a VPN. I'll drop it. I've got one that I've had forever with Microsoft 360 because I can store on the cloud all of my information, video clips and photos everything that's kind of important, well, I'm going to drop that. I'll just have to uh, buy yet another external hard drive and, and do it that way. So I'm, I'm going through and figuring out any subscriptions I've got to cancel those, get rid of them, and um, see if I can come up with somewhere close to $75 so that I can start using Vimeo. So that's that's the thing on that. Somebody asked me, are, are, aren't you concerned because you're going to lose the income from YouTube? The problem is the way they've been cheating YouTube advertisement for me went three years ago to about $400 a month to under $100 a month. And the last couple months, the way they've, they've changed yet again, I, I'm right around $30, $32 a month. Just having the consistency that another platform will give me, I think I'll be able to make that up. So, you know, I, I, I have to do something. They're not really leaving me any choice. Their, their intention is to drive uh, small people out. They want just big business. And, uh, and, they're, and they're making it very clear. So it's, it's just a matter of time. And they've turned the heat up. So, you know, I got to make a move pretty quick or the channel just won't exist anymore. And I want to do it, and the feedback I get whenever I explain situations like this is, is please don't stop doing it. Please don't. So I'm not going to stop doing it, but that's where we're at. So there will be a few more changes, and hopefully we can just kind of settle in. I have moved uh, almost all of the financial contributions all, all to my webpage, uh, grandcolumbia.live. It's all there, whether you do a monthly subscription, a membership, whether it's a one-time contribution, it's, it's all there. So uh, if you're of a mind to help support the channel, just go there, use that. Uh, it comes through to me in three or four days. It's not the fastest, it's not the slowest, but it's certainly reliable because it's an actual legit bank gateway, completely reliable. So that's it. Thank you for, uh, as I said, thanks for hanging in there with me, and um, I'll see you soon.